The role of neutral host network operators is only set to grow in the 5G era as telcos increasingly adopt infrastructure sharing strategies. So how is this trend impacting the plans of the neutral host players? Well, I'm talking today with Brendan O'Reilly, Global Chief Technology Officer at BAI Communications, about the company's operations and aspirations in 5G. So uh, Brendan, great to see you again. Um, can you just tell us about BAI Communications and your role there? Well, hi, Ray, and thanks for having me today. So at BAI Communications, we design, build, and operate cellular, Wi-Fi, radio, broadcast, and IP networks across our markets. We have a team of engineers and technology experts who help operators around the world ensure that they can get coverage and capacity into really difficult places. We also have a team of data engineers who look at use cases as diverse as driverless trains, video surveillance, and journey analytics to help our transit operators with their day-to-day -day work. Um, to give you a, a flavor of some of the things that we do in our markets, in New York, our business Transit Wireless, it has 160 miles of fiber and supplies uh, cellular coverage to 283 stations across that network. In Toronto, it's 75 stations uh, covering the whole of that network in Toronto. And in Hong Kong, our network helps uh, provide service to 2 billion journeys a year across what is probably the most advanced network in the world of its kind. Um, we're, we're actually pioneering a new 5G DAS in, in that network at, at the moment. And then in Australia, we support nearly 2,000 broadcast services across radio and TV. Um, and uh, in the UK, we've set up our office to uh, hopefully try and win the TFL bid in London and also expand out into Europe. My role at the moment is to help try and coordinate all of those great engineers and data experts that we have around the world to be able to focus on our customers' needs. And our customers vary from operators to, to transit operators to broadcast uh, companies, as I said, and really helping our customers deliver on the promises that they've made to their customers. Okay, interesting. Uh, what are the main trends impacting BAI's business right now? Is demand for neutral host services growing? Yeah, absolutely demand for neutral host is growing because the, the MNOs and the operators around the world are faced with the dilemma of having just spent huge amounts of money on 5G spectrum. Uh, the customers, and you, you know, Ray, you're, you're a customer of an MNO in the UK. Uh, our customers uh, want that 5G service as quickly as possible, and we're here to support the MNOs. We do that through a couple of things. Neutral host allows MNOs to be able to cut the price of their deployments uh, by sharing that infrastructure with other operators. And I think the trend that we're seeing is that operators around the world are focusing more on customer outcomes and focusing their investment there rather than in the infrastructure itself. You've seen over the last couple of years as uh, operators sell off their tower assets, they don't see that necessarily as something that they should compete in. They don't see infrastructure as a place to compete. They see customer experience as a, as a competition that they should win and we're here to help them do that so we're definitely seeing neutral hosts um, take flight but we're also seeing the rise of smart communities uh, and smart communities uh, it's, it's an easier way of looking at a smart city smart cities are made up of an infinite number of smart communities that can be transit it can be health it can be education and we're beginning to help our smart communities build up to that dream of a smart city and then lastly, the role of private networks for enterprise continues to grow. Uh, and it's something that we're beginning um, to get involved in through some of our um, enterprise contacts. And we see that side of the market really exponentially growing. Um, and that's because, again, the enterprise wants uh, a specific outcome and not necessarily from a specific operator. They want choice in the future. And that's where companies like BAI absolutely have a role in delivering that, that outcome. Okay, so you're playing in a, a number of really sort of key growth areas right now in the market. Um, and 5G obviously is impacting uh, a lot of what's going on. Uh, what kind of impact is 5G having on BAI? How is this influencing the company's strategy and investments? Yeah, well, we, we've got a vision for BAI in 2025 where 5G um, is absolutely at the heart of, of our growth. 
um, and not just our growth, but our customers' growth. So 5G, uh, we're at the cusp now where we've started to see uh, operators launch 5G, but 5G, uh, 5G non-standalone. Um, and as they move towards standalone and start to think about the applications that begin, can be used with massive IoT, ultra reliable, low latency, uh, and they obviously come with standalone, we're starting to see their attitudes towards deployment change slightly because there's huge investment required to be able to meet those really high standards. So 5G absolutely plays a, plays a role. But to be honest with you, it's not just about 5G. It's about all technology. It's about um, LoRaWAN. It's about Wi-Fi. It's about the continued rise of, of IP networks. What we at BAI intend to do is to be able to deliver a package of technology uh, solutions that meet the need of the end customer and not just push one uh, technology strand. So as important as 5G is, um, actually the advancement of technology in being able to deliver customer outcomes is really where BAI is setting its stall out. And then to build on that, our data analytics uh, team is looking at how it can help our customers get more value out of the networks that it invests in. So how can, you know, in terms of transit, how can we help with driverless trains? How can we ensure that, you know, our transit operators get, get the most efficient network they need out of it? How can we help the uh, MNOs in terms of personalizing services that they want to offer to their customers? You know, how can we ensure that, you know, if you're traveling on a, on, on a train, you know, and you buy a coffee every day, how can we make sure that the coffee seller knows you're coming and, you know, you get your coffee uh, without having to wait at the station? Now, we've thought about these use cases for many, many years, but 5G and some of the associated technologies that come with that really allow that to come to life in the next 12 to 24 months. Yeah, it's, it's really starting to, to pick up now and we can see a lot more uh, enterprise use cases and, and industry vertical use cases coming out there. So what kind of particular role can a neutral host company such as BAI play specifically in 5G? I mean, does this impact your potential customer base and addressable market and the kind of assets you need to deploy, for example, edge computing? Actually, for a company like BAI, we're already in the edge computing market. We have a number of uh, edge data centers in all of our deployments around the world. And actually, we're able to use that to bring more value, not just to the, to the end customers, the enterprise customers, but also to, to the MNOs. What I see as the real value for, for companies like BAI is we're very much vendor agnostic. We're not uh, trying to push one type of hardware or one type of software. We're very much in listening mode when we speak to our customers. What is it that they are trying to achieve for their customers, for their business, and how can we help them with that? So actually the, the most important um, role that we play is that of listening to our customers' needs and then helping them execute on them. The fact that we are vendor agnostic uh, means that we try and find the right solution for them. And we work with a huge number of vendors around the world um, to be able to deliver on our customers' expectations. I think that, that the way we go to the next level with that is enterprise customers in general are looking for something really specific. And, you know, if you're an M&O or if you're a, a, a vendor, you're trying to sell them something that fits within your technology roadmap. As a neutral host, we're only interested in making sure that the outcomes you're looking for are achieved. So that, I think, is a really important part of the role of neutral host and something of BAI that we're doing with our customers every day in all of our markets. OK, well, that, that sounds like it makes your job really uh, interesting and dynamic. And you must see a lot of uh, innovation in the market right now. Uh, what kind of technical advances would help BAI's plans right now? What kind of innovation would you like to see from the market? I, you're absolutely right. You know, it's it's never boring at BAI and every day, you know, talking to new vendors about uh, new types of technology that might be able to help uh, in our deployments for our customers um, makes it a really exciting time to be part of BAI and as part of, you know, our, our industry in general. I think the real advancement that, that we'd like to see is um, that move towards multi-operator uh, everything. So that could be multi-operator small cells, it could be multi-operator DAS. And we're beginning to see some of those from the vendors in the Far East and in the US. But I really think that multi-operator everything will allow the neutral host to be able to work with governments, local and central municipalities across the world, to be able to deliver 
a aesthetically pleasing network from their point of view, but also deliver the outcomes that they want and the MNOs want. So for me, it's it's multi-operator everything, Ray. That would be my sort of nirvana at the moment. Now, one of the trends in the industry, of course, is uh, sort of open networking. Um, will the growing interest in this, and in particular, open RAN, have any impact on BAI's plans? It's already part of our plans, Ray. I think open RAN is one of the most exciting uh, innovations that has come to radio networks in 20 years. Um, the idea of being able to break the radio network down uh, and uh, upgrade as innovation comes in and make uh, agile decisions from an operator's point of view, I think is really exciting. And our networks uh, that we're building at the moment have that in mind. We see Open RAN as the ability for operators to deliver day in, day out on the promises that they've made to their customers. And it would be wrong for us not to allow that to happen. So we're very much looking at how we can ensure that as these open RAN vendors are able to deliver the services that they're looking to deliver on 4G and 5G, we're able to adapt with our networks. And we are working with a number of open RAN vendors at the moment to ensure that happens. I think that the, the other side of that though is that you know open RAN vendors aren't necessarily gonna start looking at legacy uh, networks, 2G, 3G, etc. So how do we ensure that we as neutral hosts allow our customers to be able to deliver both, maybe a legacy uh, single RAN solution and an open RAN uh, solution for advanced technologies? And that's a, a real challenge at the moment, but something we're working through. Um, so what are the big industry trends that you expect to see in the coming year or two? Uh, I mean, is anybody asking you about your 6G strategy yet? No, we, we haven't. We, we don't have many people uh, asking us about 6G yet. We do have lots of people very excited about 5G, but we are playing a role uh, through the University of Surrey um, in understanding what the implications of 6G are. So it's absolutely uh, part of our plans. But I think for us, it's about really delivering on the promise of 5G. What we've seen you know, throughout the years is that as the generations of technology have gone on, there's always been that sort of smaller step. 2G, you know, changed um, the mobile market and 3G promised a lot of things that it was actually 4G that delivered. What we want to ensure is that us and our networks allow 5G to be the technology that we all believe and want it to be. We don't want it to be a smaller stepping stone to 6G. We want it to deliver huge change, you know, whether that's not just in our industry, but socioeconomic change by delivering smart communities and smart cities around the world. So uh, I think the real, um, the real challenge for the industry is to ensure that we don't overpromise and underdeliver deliver uh, with 5G, is to ensure that we educate in the right way. So I don't mean educate consumers necessarily, but help local governments understand the role that 5G could play for it. You know, that the smart communities of the future will be based upon networks of many technologies doing many different things and it's the role of us at BAI to be able to help those smart communities understand the impact of decisions that are made but also the value that can be driven by it and that I see is probably one of the most exciting things I've been involved in in my 20 years of, of working in this industry. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Particularly the last year, I think, has shown the value to a lot more people of the, the, the communications industry and, and the role it plays. And long may that continue. Well, it, it sounds like you've got a really, really interesting job uh, right now and, and some great years ahead of you, Brendan. So thanks for joining us today. Let's talk again soon uh, and catch up and see how things are developing. And, uh, and good luck with the plans at BAI. Thanks very much.